Hey there Android developers, this is Marina from the Firebase team and in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with Firebase on Android. I'm going to use this Android app to illustrate step by step how to start using Firebase services in an Android application. It's a simple app that is built with Jetpack Compose and it only has one composable function that creates a single button in the center of the screen. But before I start, there are some prerequisites that I need to pay attention to. First, I need to install the most recent version of Android Studio. I can download it from developer.android.com. I also need to make sure my Android app uses Android X and meets the minimum version requirements. These include the Target API, Compile SDK, and Gradle Build Tools. And if I'm not sure about the minimum version requirements, I can always have a look at the official Firebase documentation. Here's a quick tip. Android Studio will highlight the Target API and Gradle Build Tools versions if they are not the most up-to-date ones. So instead of looking at the documentation, I can simply hover my cursor over the highlighted area and ask Android Studio to update to the latest version. Once I have Android Studio installed and meet all the version requirements, I need to set up a physical Android device or use an emulator to run my application. I choose to create the emulator from within the Android Studio by clicking on Tools, Device Manager, Create Device. Once I've done all this, I can now sign in to the Firebase console with my Google account to kick off adding Firebase to my app. And the first thing I see here is something about a Firebase project. Before adding Firebase to this Android app, let me first explain what a Firebase project is and what's the difference between Firebase projects and Firebase apps. A Firebase project is actually a Google Cloud project behind the scenes, but with all the Firebase services enabled for it. Inside a Firebase project, I can register platform variants of an application, and they will all share the same resources. For example, all apps within a Firebase project will share the same database, the same user base, the same analytics data, and so on. Firebase currently supports apps that are built for Android, iOS and Apple's other platforms, Web, Flutter, C++, and Unity. So if I'm developing the same application for different platforms, I should register all the platform variants in the same Firebase project. But if I'm developing entirely different applications with different use cases and different users in mind, I should create two separate Firebase projects, one for each application. One icon, one Firebase project. If you're interested in learning more about Firebase projects and apps, there's a series of videos on the Firebase YouTube channel called How Firebase Projects Work. So definitely check that out. The links are available in the description. OK, here's what I'm going to do next. I will create a Firebase project, register a new Android app to it, configure the code base to connect to Firebase, and add the first Firebase service to it. If you want to follow along with this video, now is the time to open your Android project in Android Studio. Now wait. Ready? There are two different ways to create a Firebase project and configure an Android app, via the Firebase console or via the Android Studio. The steps to do everything via Android Studio are very straightforward, and you can see them in this YouTube short and in the official documentation linked in the video description. Today, I want to take the time to walk you through the Firebase console steps. When I go to the Firebase console URL, there's an option to add a new Firebase project. The next screen will prompt me to create a name for this project. As I said before, a Firebase project is also a Google Cloud project. So if I already have a Google Cloud project to which I would like to add Firebase services, I should select it from this dropdown instead of creating a new one. I'll create a new project, so I need to type the project's name. Note that there is a string that updates automatically as I type the name for my brand new project. This is the project ID. It uniquely identifies my project across Firebase and Google Cloud. It's helpful if I remember my project ID, but I can pretty easily find it again if I don't. The next screen will allow me to enable Google Analytics for my Firebase project. This is optional, but it's highly recommended since it allows me to use many useful features, like the ones I see here on this screen. It enables targeting, reporting, and more in Firebase Crashlytics, cloud messaging, in-app messaging, remote config, A-B testing, and cloud functions. I will enable Analytics because I really want to try these features. So the next step is associating my new Firebase project with a Google Analytics account. A Google Analytics account is the access point for analytics, and it can have one or more analytics properties. Each property is linked to a different Firebase project. I can select an existing Google Analytics account to use, or I can select Create a new account. To create a new account, first I need to choose a Google Analytics account name. Then I need to choose the analytics location. 
This represents the region of my organization, so I'll select United Kingdom. I can also modify the data sharing settings according to my needs. I'll just use the default settings and accept the Google Analytics terms. The last thing I need to do is click on the Create Project button. Now, Firebase will take care of creating the Google Analytics account and setting up the Firebase project for me. Once it's finished, I can click on the Continue button and it will take me to the Project Overview page of the console. All right, now that I have a new Firebase project, I need to register my Android app so I can prepare my code base to use Firebase services. To do so, I will click on the Android icon that I see in the Project Overview page. To register an Android app with my Firebase project, I need to know the package name of my app and I can get this information in Android Studio. I just need to open the app level Gradle file and search for the application ID keyword. I can copy this ID and paste it inside the Android package name field in the Firebase console. This is the only mandatory information that I need to input when registering an Android app in a Firebase project. But there are a couple of optional fields that I want to explain before we move forward. The first one is called App Nickname. This is the internal-only name that will display in several places throughout the Firebase console, and it can help me to identify my app easily in the console. I'm going to call mine Android Logging App. The second optional field asks for a shell one hash of the debug signing certificate so I can prove that my app belongs to me. The shell one hash is required by Firebase authentication when using Google Sign-in or phone authentication, and by Firebase Dynamic Links. Firebase recommends filling in this information only when necessary, because I can't have the same combination of shell one hash and Android package name in more than one Firebase project. Right now, I'm not planning on using any of the services that require shell one, so I'm just going to leave this field blank and click on the Register App button. Next, Firebase will give me a file called google-services.json. This is the Firebase configuration file for my Android app. I need to download this file and move it into the app module root directory of my Android project. If I open this file, I can see that it contains a lot of configuration values. A Firebase SDK needs these values in order to configure itself and to connect my Android app to my Firebase project and the app that I register with my Firebase project. None of this information is secret, and I need to include it when I build my production app since the config values are required for my app to access Firebase services. But here goes another tip for you. If you want to share your code as an open source project, you probably want each person who uses your code to create and configure their own Firebase project and use their own Firebase config file. It's probably a good idea to not include this file in your version control system and instead include some instructions on how to set up a Firebase project in your project's readme file or, you know, link to this video. Once I download and add the JSON file to my Android project, I can click Next and see the steps to add the Firebase SDK to my code base. To make the google-services.json config values accessible to Firebase SDKs, I need to add the Google Services Gradle plugin. Since I'm using a version of Android Gradle plugin higher than 7.1, I need to add the Google Services plugin to my build.gradle file under the Plugins block. But if you are using an older version of the Android Gradle plugin, then you need to add it under the Build Script block. Next, in my app level Gradle file, I'll add the Google-Services plugin. Now I'm ready to add the dependencies for the Firebase products that I want to use in my app. I can do it by adding the libraries to the dependencies list and specifying the library's versions. But there is actually a better way to do it, using the Firebase Bill of Materials. This Bill of Materials, or BOM for short, enables me to manage the versions of all the Firebase libraries that I want to use in my app by specifying only the BOM version. And the BOM will automatically pull all the individual library versions that work well together. For this sample app, I'll add the dependency and specify the most recent version of the BOM. And I'll add the dependency for Google Analytics, but I will not specify the Analytics version. The BOM will do that for me behind the scenes. Depending on when you watch this video, the BOM version may already be higher. So check out the release notes linked to the description for the most recent version. After adding the desired SDKs, I need to sync my Android project with Gradle files. And then back in the Firebase console, I click Next, then continue to console to close out the workflow for registering my Android app with my Firebase project. 
If I followed all the steps correctly, I should be able to build, install, and run my Android app in this device emulator back in Android Studio. There it is. My sample app is up and running. If I search for Firebase in the logcat, I can see this line here confirming that the installation worked and that my application is now accessing Firebase and ready to use Google Analytics. Since I'm already here and I've enabled Google Analytics when setting up the Firebase project, I'll now add a basic analytics call to know when the user clicked on the log button in my app. I'll navigate to this method that is called when the user clicks on the button, on log button click, and I'll call firebase.analytics.log event. I need to pass the name of the button click event, which I'll call log underscore button underscore click. I can also optionally pass a map of event parameters. But for this case, I'll leave it as no since there isn't anything else I would like to know about this event. Now I can run the app and click on the log button. To make sure it worked, I can either search for analytics in the logcat, as I see here, or I can open the Firebase project in the Firebase console and click on Analytics Debug View. All events logged by the apps registered in this Firebase project should appear here. This was just a quick and simple example of analytics usage, but there's much, much more I can do. I can use analytics with remote config to personalize my app. I can run A-B testing. I can even send push notifications with Firebase cloud messaging that target different audiences that I create with Google Analytics. And Analytics is only one of the many Firebase products that I can use in my Android app. For example, I can use Firestore, a NoSQL database, to store structured data in the cloud. I can improve the quality of my app by monitoring crashes and performance issues with Crashlytics and performance monitoring. The list of what I can do with Firebase when building, releasing, and growing my app is huge. So if you're interested in learning more about Firebase products and about how to get started using Firebase with other platforms, such as iOS and Apple's other platforms, or Web, Unity, even Flutter, subscribe to our YouTube channel and have fun creating.